Hey guys, welcome back. So your girl is full. I just finished smashing on some very delicious food. So I kind of have the ideas. But yes, I'm going to go ahead and do this video because I was inspired. Like, I always get inspired with videos by so many different things. You know, that's what makes me an artist. That's what makes me a creator because different things inspire me. Mostly life, obviously, generally speaking. But um, just my observations, like being an author, being the owner of a literary organization, so managing different authors, being a PhD student in uh, clinical psychology, working in mental health, just different things, you know, my observations in these different settings have inspired me to do this video topic on jealousy coming from the veterans in the game towards the newbies. And I'm like, for what? If you were a veteran, why? Why? And I know what I know what really initially triggered this topic idea was seeing you guys know with the whole Kevin Hart thing and seeing Mike Epps reaction to what Kevin Hart said in response to what Cat Williams said. It's just like all this he say, he say, he say stuff, right? But it's something that is really impertinent and it's something that obviously impacts entertainment and the black community. You know, it's like a trending topic. And seeing just different people's reactions, it kind of made me think a little bit. So for you guys who aren't aware, I'm just trying to sum it up a little bit real quick. So Cat Williams went on V103 station, which is a radio station, very prominent radio station in Atlanta. And he went on to talk about, like, just the industry and, you know, talking about different comedians, Kevin Hart. He talked about Tiffany Haddish. And it's funny because they have they had a movie that just came out, <clears throat> which I actually attended the premiere out here in Los Angeles called Night School. Very great movie. You guys got to go see it if you haven't seen it already. But, you know, I find it interesting that he made a comment about Kevin Hart kind of like throwing shade on him. Being that he just, you know, had a movie that just released. I'm like, perfect timing, right? Perfect timing. I guess people find different ways, I guess, to be relevant. So, and that's the thing. A lot of people, I hope you guys can hear me, but a lot of people said that they don't think that he was throwing shade. It was like, nah, he ain't really throwing shade. You know, he would just stay in facts or his opinion. And I'm like, I wouldn't say it's facts. More like his opinion, but his opinion is shade towards Kevin Hart and other people who are successful comedians or entertainers in the industry, you know, and I'm just like, for what? So, Cat Williams said that, and then Kevin Hart went on The Breakfast Club, which is a very prominent radio station in New York City, to respond, not necessarily to respond, but he was promoting his movie, but part of that promotion, you know, they had Charlemagne, they had to bring it up about what did he think about this whole, you know, Cat Williams ordeal, or whatever. And his statement that he made and i like kevin hart's response you know i feel like he always keeps it professional of course he's a funny guy but for the most part he's professional he's a businessman you know and i support kevin hart i met kevin hart actually back in atlanta several years ago actually in walmart and he's cool i got his autograph shake his hand you know real cool man down to earth you know and i like his response because i mean he just gave like how people say Cat Williams gave facts, so to speak. Kevin Hart just simply gave facts. And he said, he pointed out how Cat Williams he hating because he not making the money, I guess, like he used to be. You know, he kind of fell off. And everybody know that. This is no secret. Everybody know that he was using drugs. That's no secret. And people were trying to say that, oh, well, Kevin Hart put him out on Front Street saying that oh he told his business it's like no kevin hart didn't tell cat Williams business because everybody knew that cat Williams was on drug you know and i remember like this was back i think when i was in was it florida actually i think before i moved to atlanta and i was uh, i had a close friend a roommate you know and he was a big fan of cat williams he got i think he was the one that really kind of put me on to cat williams stand-up comedy and so like we pretty much own all of his uh comedy specials on all of uh, Cat Williams' comedy specials, but I would notice like how a lot of a lot of what the content was in his comedy specials, he would be repeating. 
from one comedy stand up special to another comedy stand up special as if he was running out of material, you know. And then he was swearing a lot. It's just like you can tell he was using drugs and then he ran into some kind of serious issue where I think they arrested him because he got so accused of stealing some jewelry or so it was some crazy stuff that he got ca caught up in or whatever with uh, Cat Williams. And so I kind of like being that he had fell off. I kind of like lost interest in him. I mean, granted, I remember going to Amoeba, which is a very popular music slash DVD store out in Hollywood, and it's actually on Sunset Boulevard. And, you know, I would look for, like, Cat Williams' new comedy specials, and I wouldn't see them. I, mean, I would see all the old ones, which I'd already seen and owned, but I couldn't find any new ones. And I'm like, okay, what's up with Cat Williams? So I eventually had just lost interest in Cat Williams, you know, and just moved on. And so I, I find it kind of ironic that he just pops up out of nowhere and then starts to throw shade. Now, granted, Cat Williams, his history extends far beyond Kevin Hart. I mean, Kevin Hart, he go way back too, but I think we all have a very, a very deeper, closer, closer connection to uh, Cat Williams, you know? He's been in a lot of movies. And it's just like, why now? Why throw shade, you know? And I, it's obvious. He's like, what other reason would he have to throw shade other than the fact that he's a comedian, Kevin Hart is a comedian, but Kevin Hart, we know Kevin Hart is doing better than him. And I feel like that's a big, I even made a post on this on my uh, Facebook page, how that's a big issue in the black community, how you have a lot of black people will throw shade at each other. Like you'll see a, a black person rising in the black community and people as like a so-called beneath them, so to speak, are not doing as well as them, will throw shade at these people. You know, it's like, let a person be great. Let a person rise. Kevin Hart is on a time where he is on the up and up. You know, he's he's pretty much at the top. This man, like, I don't think it's one year that passes by. <coughs> I don't think it's one year that passes by that Kevin Hart doesn't get a, a, a role in a big budget film production. Like, this man is doing big things. So, I get it. I That makes perfect sense why people will hate on this man. That makes perfect sense why people will throw shade at him because he's black and he's winning. And then you have all of these older or let's say, you know, veteran comedians who are not getting these kind of roles. You know, they're not even getting any kind of deals with Hollywood and the entertainment industry. They have to do it themselves to go, you know, independent, which is, trust me, not wrong with being independent because you have complete control over all your stuff, you know over your content, what you create, like, you own that versus when you get uh, paid for hire, then it's not the same thing, you know? It's like, they own it, and you're just working for them. And so, actually, Kevin Hart, he's kind of hybrid where he's moved, he's moved, uh, slowly moving away from, like, the being the, the pay for hire. He talked about that um, even at the premiere, you know, at the movie premiere that I attended, uh, for a night school, how he just feels so blessed that he doesn't have to be for hire anymore, you know, he owns his stuff, he produced night school, you know, he owns his own production company, his own network, LOL network, like, he's doing big things, and I feel like a lot of people are just, they hating on the man, you know, and you see that, like, that's something that you see often within the black community, it's just like, black people can't rise, and it's, funny because I'm doing my research for my dissertation and in my lit review one of my sources is post-traumatic slave syndrome by Joy De Dr. Joy DeGruy and she talks about like she pr pretty much explains the rationale for why she thinks black people behave in this way is like you see one black person trying to make it up everybody else trying to come for them and she said that it's linked to slavery back then because you had the house Negroes, the field Negroes, and then the field Negroes would have, feel some kind of way towards the house Negroes because they felt like they were too close to the master, so to speak. And they began, the house Negroes, in a sense, began to take on the identity of the master, the slave master. So I'm like, I get it. And I think that's how, I think that's how some people in the black community are kind of perceiving uh, Kevin Hart as if, like, I 
I think they ain't perceiving him like that, like as if he's sold out, you know, against the black community and he's taking the identity of a house Negro, so to speak. And I'm just like, let the man be. I don't see that, but I feel like he's a comedian so he can get away with certain things, you know, and that's the whole point of comedy is to be funny. So it's like anytime a black man is funny and he's successful, he gets labeled as a coon. To me, I think that that's putting black men in a very bad position. It's like putting them against the wall because, okay, if you're black and you're funny and you have all this money, those three things, then you're a coon. Thank you. It's like, that's that's a bad situation to be in. It's like, you can't win from fucking losing. If the white man ain't attacking you, you got people within the black community attacking you. So that's the issue we're dealing with. That's the Kevin Hart thing, right? And I just feel like, y'all get off my boy Kevin Hart. Let him do him. Let him rise. But I guess, hey, what do you expect? It's going to happen. It's like, that whole slave mentality, it, it hasn't gone anywhere, you know? People in the black community, it's like... You, especially the ones that so-called, I guess, on the bottom or struggling to make it, living in poverty or whatever, you know, they identify themselves, I guess, with the Phil Negro, so to speak, you know, calling each other niggas and stuff like that. And then anytime they see a black person somewhat try to make, even if they came from the bottom, we know Kevin Hart came from the bottom. He wasn't born into wealth or riches. This man come from a poor family. Y'all know that. He lost his mother, you know. He's from Philly. And so it's just sad how black people, just the whole crab in a barrel mentality, you can't rise. You can't win. The moment they see you doing somewhat well, you know, they come attacking you. It's sad. But this video is about the veterans attacking and having jealousy and hatred towards the newbies. Because with the Kevin Hart and the Cat Williams situation, it's like that's what you see. And even not just him, but other comedians, older comedians who are very well, who are uh, have a long-standing history in comedy entertainment, attack the younger comedians. They hate on them because they see that they are rising. The same thing happened with Remy Ma and Nicki Minaj. I made a video about that when they went through their whole beef. It's like Remy Ma, we know she's a legend. She's a veteran in the game, and people were like pinning them against each other, you know, and. Remy Ma had this kind of animosity towards Nicki Minaj. I guess she felt like she was taking her spot. And it's just like, it's room for everybody. But the moment a new person, a newbie, come to rise up, then what do you have? The older people in the game, the veterans, hating on them. It happens in entertainment, with comedians, with entertainers, with musicians. It happens even with authors. I see this happening so often. Like, being that I own a literary organization, you got authors hating on each other. The older, the, the veteran authors. These authors have been in the game for, we talk about 10, 15, 20 years as published authors, right? But then you got the new ones rising up, you know? Some are real new, fresh, like six months old, a year old, a couple years old, and the new ones are doing well. They are self-published. They own their own companies. They just doing they doing it big and making get a lot of sales. You know, get a lot of recognition from many different sources, many different platforms, including Ubawa, the one that I own. And I see this myself directly. That this is hatred. Every year, at the end of every year, um, Ubawa uh, we host Ubawa's Top 100 Authors of the Year. So for 2017, it was Ubawa's Top 100 Authors of 2017. For 2018, which is coming up at the end of the year in December, we host Ubawa's Top 100. We, we, we will host Ubawa's Top 100 authors of 2018. Now, how I how we usually do it is that is we take nominations. These are all nominations that we collect. Nothing I ain't got nothing to do with. It. I moderated, of course, but this is not me necessarily choosing. Oh, this author should be the top author. No, these are based on nominations, and then from there, people are able to vote. And who ended up making the list? Now, we have veteran authors who have made the list, but a lot of new authors make the list. And I feel like that's where Ubawa comes in. That's where I come in as the owner and the president of Ubawa to moderate that. Because, yes, 
the mission of Ubawa is to promote authors who don't usually get the recognition. We're talking about unknown authors, which just so happen to be new authors, the newbies in the game. That is the mission. That will always be the mission. Nobody can change that. I've had people come and attacking me, you know, sending me all kind of emails because they make the list and they feel like, oh, I got all these books out. I made all these sales. But then you got this new author. How the hell did the new author make the list? And I'm just like, excuse me? Last time I checked, Ubawa was established for the unknown authors, the lesser known authors, the rising authors. That's who we promote. That's who I want to give recognition to. No, I don't handpick necessarily who makes the list and say, oh, I want this person. I know this, this is all vote. I let the people handle that. But when it comes to narrowing down, because we have so many nominations. When I say, listen, when I say, when I open up the call, and you guys probably will see if you guys follow Ubawa's page on Facebook that when I open up the call for nominations, oh my gosh. When I say we receive thousands of nominations, like they blow it up, y'all. They blow it up, which is great. But let me tell you, <laughs> two, 3,000 people cannot make the freaking ballot. That's just impossible to put 3,000. Like, who the hell got that much time? I would have to, like, come on. That makes no sense at all to have 3,000 names on a ballot. Y'all ain't even going to vote if there's that many names on the ballot. And you got, like, literally people will get mad, which they have, and come sending me, like, hate mail and, you know, posting bad things about the list and it's a fake list just trying to discredit the list because they didn't make the list i'm like this is some sad stuff here because number one every single i would say i say every single you got some white people that somehow make the list and that's great but a good 99 percent of the names on the list are black authors black people so you have black people hating on their own people. It's sad, y'all. To the point where they not even not only do they attack Obawa. Now I, I don't really take it personal. Sometimes they do call out my name. They'll be like, oh Obawa, da 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 da. And then they'll say, Oh, Danielle, she she's the founder, she's the owner. She the one who run it, down and say whatever they gotta say about me online. And I'm like, hey, freedom of speech, you're gonna say what they gotta say. That's it, that's their perspective, right? But what really gets me is when they start attacking the names, the people, the names of the people who made the list. And I'm like, hold on now. It's, nah. Well, if you're going to do that, then I will ban your ass from the page. And, nah, uh, man, you would, I'll make sure you never make the list. Not only that, but I'll make sure that you would never be able to attend any Ubawa event, any Ubawa book convention, like, for real. Because that is not, I don't, that's, I don't appreciate that. And that's not what, that's not what the list is about. The list is about celebrating african-american authors no matter their age not about getting mad and jealous because you didn't make the list and go and attacking the authors who have made the list like we not doing that i ain't gonna tolerate that no no so that's that you know you got hatred within the literary community and then you know i'm of course i'm in mental health and i see it even in mental health you know even in academia, you got the older so-called psychologists hating on the rising psychologists. We ain't even psychologists yet. Like, we are students. I'm a student, you guys. PhD student in my third year in a clinical psychology program. Training to become a clinical psychologist, but you will have licensed. You get what I'm saying? Licensed psychologists. I ain't talking about newly licensed. I'm talking about people who have held licenses for over 10 years, at least 10 years. You know? <laughs> who will feel some kind of way towards the new rising psychologist to be. I'm just like, are you serious? I mean, we get it. Like, yes, you feel like you are, you have like the ultimate say so, you know, or you know more than the, the younger ones because you've been in the game for so long, right? But it's something, I think it's something to be said about people who are veterans and they've been in whatever industry, whatever game that they're in for X number of years. And they feel like nobody can't tell them that because they've been in the industry for so many years. 
if anything, for me being a so-called newbie, I guess, which I'm not really a newbie in mental health, but I guess a newbie in terms of a rising clinical psychologist, um, I have much respect for people who have come before me. Because I feel like, hell, they've been, they made it this far, they know something. So I'm very receptive to hearing what they have to say. But on the other way around, I'm seeing that it ain't so much like that. It's like, okay, they want you to take from them in terms of learning and they can just tell you this and tell you that. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But I don't see it the other way around where they feel like they can learn some things from the younger generation. I'm like, first of all, times change. We know, like, shit changes. Like, every 10 years, the, the, the trends change, fast change, society change. Everything changes. Things are changing even more rapidly than 10 years, every 10 years. Sometimes every year things change, laws change, like things just change. And so it concerns me that when you have these licensed psychologists, veterans in the game who will kind of look down, it's like you may provide some information that's something that you know, right? And it can be something that's valid with empirical evidence. And they'll come at you like, I don't know about that, you know? It's like they're so close-minded. I don't know, maybe that just turns me off to be around people who are very close-minded, but on the same token, like, you also hear them saying certain things, like, oh, he's just a trainee, or they don't know nothing, you know, like, oh, what do they know, you know? That's the attitude that they really do have. I know sometimes they may joke about it, you know, you can make a joke, but no, that's the attitude that you really do have. Personally, that's how they feel, you know, it's like, oh, what do you know? And I'm just like, we know a lot we know what's mo most relevant they may know things that how they've been trained back in the 80s or the 90s or the early 2000s but that sometimes that information that they've been trained with is so outdated it's so outdated so historic it ain't even relevant or applicable to the current times they ain't even abreast on the new laws and how it applies to certain things certain policies certain codes that we have to abide by within the profession just completely outdated right i feel like it should be a bi-directional type of influence you know where that the younger generation can influence the older or the veterans in the game and the veterans definitely we need them to influence us because shit, they have the foundation they have the historical knowledge to impart upon us so it should, i feel like it should really definitely go both ways and we on both ends should be very receptive to different each other's perspectives that's just my take but hey i can go on and on and on and on about this topic but i just feel like man i see it so much in so many different arenas that it bothers me it's like the moment you see it happening it's just like oh here we go again you know here we go again the hatred where is the love? It would be different if it was like balance, right? Maybe perhaps, but I don't even still, if it was balance, I don't know. I don't like to deal with hate and jealousy. And especially if it's just simply because the person is newer. Like you hating on the next person just because they are newbie and they are on the rise. I don't like that. But hey, I'm about to go ahead and end this video. My throat is like, Danielle, you've been talking too much. <laughs> I just like to share my opinion on these topics, you know, and I encourage you guys to share your opinion. Everybody got an opinion. Everybody have a perspective. So I'll catch you guys later. That's mine. So I'll catch you guys later in the next one. All right. Have a great day. Bye.